السلام عليكم ورحمة الله <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, We had done uh, finishing the tafsir of Surah Al-Taghabun Surah number 64 last time and uh, looking into the surah as usual after we finish the surah uh, trying to go look back and uh, review the benefits that were already mentioned in the surah um, and doing that is part of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to reflect upon the Quran and how can we bring this into actions and how can we benefit from what we read and what we memorize uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, make, a, make our life uh, is the life of the Qur'an, the life of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this surah, as we uh, saw 18 verses, and it's a Madani surah, as you remember. And uh, the title of the surah has, of course, uh, you know, it's uh, the effect of it throughout the entire surah which is at Tawabun, and that's the only place where the word is used, which is, as they translated, the mutual loss, or uh, the, the loss that happens when a person loses such a great opportunity when it was so easy for him, loses a great reward or a great uh, profit when it was something so easy for him to gain, especially that he owned it, especially that it's a word used when a person has something, has something very valuable, and he give it away for nothing. And he would regret so much of what he did. And this is in this in this world is a is a very regretful thing. So you can imagine that when a person gives away something that is so expensive and in return he would get an everlasting punishment in the hereafter. That's how the disbelievers they would see in the hereafter how easy it was and how feasible it was to be believers and to humble themselves to the truth so that they would avoid. Uh, this everlasting hellfire that they will be in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And uh, the surah gives us this benefit and how to uh, protect ourselves and to save ourselves in the hereafter from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with uh, the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, seeing that everything belongs to Allah. And therefore, everything glorifies Allah. Everything makes us be to Allah. All the, he's the one that has the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth, and the perfect names and attributes, and he's able to do all things. These types of things, is, and these types of meanings, is never uh, any exception to it. So, um, therefore, we should rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that we ought to. And don't leave anything whatsoever to even our own selves or, or, or to be relying upon others whatsoever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is in control of everything. So feeling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, hoping for the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and having the love of Allah and being obedient to Allah and uh, purifying our hearts in such a way with matters of belief and uh, to, to, to see things according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet so one of the great benefits that we learn from the surah that people, human beings, are classified in this life into two groups, into a kafir and to a believer. And this is how they will be in the day of judgment and how they will be separated in the day of judgment. The disbelievers will be now fired and the believers will be in general. And uh, the, the, everything that happens, happens by the truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything happens for a reason and the surah talks about the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in more than one way because the qadr of Allah is the result of a person believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right way with his perfect names and attributes uh, and it starts from the verse number three that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth by the truth so when a person knows that then he would deal with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accordingly uh, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything, knows what's, what we can see and what we openly do. So it doesn't matter whether people li they like us or they praise us, they only see the outside appearance in our speech and actions. But what matters is what's in our hearts. And this is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and this is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees. Uh, you know, uh, 
no one can ever see this except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We even do not know ourselves the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows us. Uh, so to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to this matter of belief. Uh, warning the disbelievers is also something mentioned in the surah uh, of learning from the nations before that everybody shall return to Allah. So there's no point of continuing to be arrogant and to turn away from the truth. Uh, responding to some of the doubts that the believers would spread uh, about the messengership uh, of the Prophet ﷺ, that he's a human being. So how can we be guided by another human being? This is the arrogance of the human beings, so uh, which is has no validity whatsoever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most rich. Uh, the surah talks about the hereafter, and uh, that those who deny the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, by Allah, you will be resurrected and you will be informed of what you did. And this is easy for Allah. Right? And that's that's the biggest or the, 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 the most clear evidence to the hereafter. The one that created you, as it's mentioned in the beginning of the surah, right? created you from nothing. And that means he's the creator of the heavens and the earth. So the resurrection is, is, is of no comparison whatsoever to the initial creation of Allah. People see the amazing creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day in their life. So as a result of all of these foundations of methods of belief, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the believers to believe in Allah and His Messenger. And the light which is the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought down, it's called it the light other than the Qur'an is darkness. And to also be reminded that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well acquainted with every person what they do. The day of Al Qiyamah is mentioned, the day of Al Taghabun. And those who will gain and not be in loss in the day of judgment, those who have two things Al Iman wal Amal al Salih, belief and righteous good deeds. Their sins will be forgiven and they will be admitted to Jannah. And on the other hand, opposite to the belief Al Iman wal Amal al Salih and the righteous good deeds, are the disbelievers, those who disbelieved and they denied the ayat of Allah. They would be in the hellfire forever. Uh, and then the mention of Al-Qadr, every calamity is by the permission of Allah. So be comfortable to this meaning and uh, be more worried about how to act w w when it comes to the Qadr of Allah. To act patiently, to act uh, being pleased, to seek rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Al-Iman gives the guidance to the heart to be uh, content and to believe in the Qadr of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the honor of all things. That's why it gives them the, 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 the responsibility is to obey Allah, to obey the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa And the Prophet, wasalam, fulfilled his message. So no one is to be excused by saying, well, uh, the message is, is not complete, or it's not conveyed. No, the Prophet, wasalam, conveyed it perfectly. Right, and uh, we need to to seek that knowledge and to get to know the way of the Prophet Ali uh, The the Tawheed and La Ilaha Illallah and to rely upon Allah. And then the amazing part of the surah that talks about how even with all of what is mentioned, how that affects the relationships, and how all of that is related to the fact that we're created to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala alone. So we should never allow anything on the face of earth to affect our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the full obedience to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is the only call in the surah to the believers as a result of what has been mentioned from the beginning of the surah till ayah number 14. So calling the believers that from among your wives, and your children are enemies to you. We talked about that, how a loved one can be an enemy in the, in the absolute sense when it comes to the Jannah versus the Hellfire. So your enemy is the one that takes you or try to take you to the Hellfire. And your uh, ally and supporter and, 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 and so on are the one that help you to go to Jannah. So we have to differentiate between the natural love that a person has towards individuals in his life versus what really matters in the Day of Judgment. Because as we said, the natural things that people have in this life, you know, it's terminated by the end of this life unless it's for the sake of Allah, unless it's in the right way. That will continue in the day of judgment. You know, 100 years ago, 100 years ago, right? none of us 
had any uh, feelings towards his uh, loved ones because we did not exist on the face of earth. And even before you, you know, you got married, you didn't have any uh, feelings towards your wife. And the same thing, the wife didn't have feelings towards her. So before you have children, you didn't have any uh, feelings towards them because they did not exist. So now when you have a wife and children, when you have a husband and children, right, uh, this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have the natural love and inclination towards them and so on, but you have to be careful not to make them uh, a source of uh, punishment for you by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We talked about uh, the responsibility of فَحْذَرُوهُمْ to be warned, to be aware of this. And if they do, what do, they, what do you do towards them, your loved ones? If they are uh, trying to get you to go to the hellfire, not intentionally, but by being disobedient to Allah, or they distract you from your deen and so on, what should you do? You should blame yourself, not them. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to pardon and to overlook and to forgive. And we talked about the difference between the three. So, and this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to see how even a person would not even say blame uh, words towards them and things like this, but rather to be firm. To be firm upon the deen when it comes to never to compromise the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you do that with perfect kindness and mercy and all kinds of things. And that's a call also for those who are not, mar not married to try to get married. You know, a person hears a verse like this and would say then, is that a dangerous thing? Because there might be some of them are enemies. So it's, this is a call for people to get married. And this is a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Because you get to fulfill acts of obedience to Allah uh, that you would not be able to do it if you were not married. Right? So, the, and part of that is what we heard in this verse. And that means you have to, when you get married, you have to prepare yourself from the very beginning that you will be patient, that you will fulfill the commands. That this is another test. And to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, to be obedient to Allah to the, to the best of our ability. And we talked about that. How many rulings comes as a result of this? and to listen, and to obey matters of ma'roof, and to spend. And whoever is overpowered, overpower his greed, he is the successful one. And giving charity, and this will be multiplied. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most grateful, the most forbearance, the knower of the unseen and the seen, Al-Aziz al-Hakim. There are a few names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned, and actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned in the surah. Uh, and there are so many, uh, when it comes to the actions of Allah, and you would find the rulings are so much less. And this is the effect of how the submission comes in place when a person has the proper belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so that's why the call is one call to the believers and you would find the believers in full submission to the commands of Allah. All of that protects the person from uh, falling into that huge loss in the day of judgment that people would have as a result of uh, the arrogance and the disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to give us the, the ability and the means to be steadfast upon the deen of Allah. And this is, uh, this is just a brief reminder, inshallah ta'ala, of the great benefits. And there are many, many great benefits to be learned from the surah. And inshallah ta'ala, uh, Saturday we'll start surah al-talaq, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. We'll stop here, inshallah. Until you next time, and inshallah after Maghrib, uh, we'll talk about um, the Quran guiding to what is upright and what is most just, inshallah.